I am a laparoscopic urologic surgeon and I was working at All Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, India and uh, was doing laparoscopic urologic surgery from almost 1992 till 2000. And what happened uh, when I heard about the development of robotic surgery in 2000 and that's how I got to know about that. And at the same time, I learned from Dr. Bhandari and, and Dr. Menon and uh, Mr. Raj Vatikwiti and their team, they went to Paris to visit the robotic center in order to start the first robotic program in United States of America. That's how I got to know about it and I became very, very interested in this very field. When Dr. Menon started this program at Henry Ford Hospital, I came as a visiting professor in uh, 2001 as uh, uh, because uh, my background was laparoscopic urologic surgery and I have performed most of this surgery with the, you know, with the laparoscopic way which is much hard to do that. And Dr. Bhandari was, uh, you know, the one of my mentor who introduced me to Dr. Menon and then at the same time Raj and Padma Vatikuti, they started their first Vatikuti International Scholarship Program. So I, I am the first Vatikuti International Scholar and I came on that scholarship to stay in Henry Ford Hospital from 2002 to 2004 and during that period we developed, uh, you know, I mean we have gone through all these teething problems, how to develop uh, uh, robotic assisted surgery for different kind of cancer, for different kind of procedure. So this is what is uh, my journey in the beginning period of my career. Being a laparoscopic surgeon, I was debating same open surgery with the laparoscopic surgery. Now with the robotic assistant, this was a huge change, huge change for the field of surgery. So everybody was resisting because uh, why you are doing this if you can do the same thing by open surgery. So it took time to, you know, always as a, because there are two things. One is the technique, but there is a science behind it that because as a cancer surgeon, I always feel if I am doing any cancer surgery, am I helping patient to uh, take care of his biology of the disease, cancer of his disease, number one. Number two, am I improving his outcome for his cancer? Number three, if same surgery I am doing in open surgery, can I do in a much more gentle way or minimally invasive way which help in patient in recuperation and give him a good quality of life. So, I mean with that, you know, what happens if I say, but I have to prove it. So the good thing was with uh, Dr. Menon and we all published quite a lot in the field. We demonstrated actually almost, uh, I have done 400 live demonstration all across the world in my 33 years of career. And I'm doing this meeting in the live demonstration so people they can ask question, they can see for themselves what we are doing, is it better or not. When you say robotic surgery, it's a, robotic is a tool, it's a tool which you place through the keyhole, the laparoscopic pores, you put instruments in the body. So my background being a laparoscopic surgeon, it was more facile to do these procedures. Now you can see I'm lifting bladder off the vagina and you can appreciate that my fourth arm is holding the vagina. Very early in my career, I realized that this is a paradigm shift in the field of surgery. So it's not question of because this is a great tool in my mind. And uh, this is going to change the art of surgery the way we perform. Whether it's a urologic surgery, general surgery, GYN surgery or any of the surgery. So with that goal in my mind, I invested my all career because I was, a, as I mentioned earlier, I was a professor and vice chair at Premium Institute in uh, New Delhi in India. And I moved to Detroit to learn this art from Dr. Menon and their team. And that's how I got invested into that. And uh, personally, I feel because uh, after learning from the Vatiquity Urology Institute, in those days, uh, I'm talking about 2001, 2002, there are not many surgeons all across the world. So I used to go and starting this program all across the world. So in fact, between 2002 to 2004, I started this program in several countries in Europe, uh, Singapore, Asian countries, and in fact, uh, I did a first robotic surgery for India in 2005. Excellent demonstration, very good. 
we are holding this symposium in honor of KS. And uh, in fact, uh, Vatiquity Foundation wanted to start this program in India. I did a first surgery for India in 2005. Thereafter, I went to Hyderabad in 2006 to start a robotic program there. It is a great tool, uh, but the great tool will not work very well unless you have a good surgeon. We have so many great surgeons in India. We feel uh, with this technology, I think we can really pioneer in, in the world. And with the help of Vatiquity Foundation, first program, this was started in a Manipal hospital in Bangalore, and KS was there at that point in time. And we did uh, you know, the first Vatiquity Urology Foundation uh, uh, coordinated program in Bangalore, and uh, Mr. Raj was in presence, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bhandari, Dr. Menon, and all of you were there. And that was the beginning of uh, collaboration with Vatiquity Urology Foundation, and that's how they developed this program in the several part of the countries. I have advanced the field by developing several techniques and uh, published in the literature. Uh, in fact, uh, I have uh, close to 500 publication in the field of uh, urology and uh, I mean several hundreds related to robotic surgery. So you can think about that in this journey for 22 years that allows us when you are developing this technique and you want to disseminate the knowledge to others and uh, you want to publish so people they can read. And uh, with uh, Dr. Menon and myself, we have uh, edited a book, Robotics in Genitive Urinary Surgery. So we have published first edition in 2011 and uh, second edition in uh, uh, 2018 and uh, now we are working on the third edition which is one of the popular book on robotics in genital urinary surgery and uh, that incorporates the entire field of uh, robotic urologic surgery and uh, if I may say I mean basically uh, I have gathered uh, one of the largest aggregate of uh, robotic and laparoscopic surgery performing in almost 10,000 patients in my career so far. And it's uh, because I have always been in the field of uh, teaching hospital kind of thing or education. So it's not about the number, it's how much you are imparting or teaching to your team. So I always say what I did is a team efforts. It's not me, it's about the team. And with the team, I could do what I did. And uh, also, uh, my personally, I feel my unique contribution in training of fellows residents, urologists worldwide, and uh, you know, by going to their centers, helping their team to start a robotic program. And that, I feel that was uh, my, you know, the biggest achievement in my opinion, <laughs> as far as I can say. Surgery is never end of learning. It's all the time you keep learning. And uh, I always feel that uh, my patient, uh, you know, they, you know, they have trusted me. They have allowed me to do a shared decision making to do what I'm doing on their body. So I think uh, that is, uh, you know, the, I really owe a lot to my patients. And I mean, there's no question about that. But without their support and their shared decision and trusting me what I'm doing, it would have not been possible what we did. One very important thing what I feel with the robotic assistance is not about the patient. I think this has changed the quality of life for the surgeon. And uh, it is such an ergonomic instrument, so facile, so intuitive, that same surgery, what we were doing with the open way or laparoscopic way, this has become much easier. So in my opinion, it is beneficial to the patient. In addition to that, it has uh, you know, uh, it's expanded the life of the surgeon to do a better quality of surgery. What does the future hold for robotic surgery? I guess, uh, I mean, this is uh, there, it's going to stay. Now the question is, can we make more precise? Already at the maximum precision level. Now question is, uh, we have to incorporate molecular imaging, nano drug particles, which can be helped through the robotic way we can deliver in the patient's body. Somebody has a cancer and you attach the nano particle and it can deliver into the area which your place you want to go you have a good uh, imaging then you are, while you are operating and you can see right there okay this is the cancer is confined to the organ is going out of the particular organ or not so you can tailor surgery 
according to the particular patient, his uh, biology of the disease. So, those are the things. But most importantly, we live in this globe. Now, it's a, you know, all over the world we are one. So, the question is, it's not about that we are giving, as you know, I mean, at this point in time, almost uh, I think 70 percent robotic systems are in this country in United States of America. But uh, as Mr. Watikuti's goal is to, you know, impart this knowledge, this technology all across the world, thinking those kind of themes, we have to make it a cost effective. So, we have to bring down the cost how we can bring down the cost with the, for the instrumentation for this particular technology. So, those are the things we have to think for the serve the cause of humanity all across the globe not particular in particular area. In my teaching career of almost over 30 years, I feel very blessed that I help uh, various fellows, residents, junior faculty different centers all across the globe to develop robotic assisted minimally invasive surgery to impart to their patients to help the community and uh, I think uh, this is what I can say in summary but for the Vatiquity Foundation and but for the help of uh, Dr. Men perhaps this would have not been possible in my early career. So, I would like to thank both of them.